Hey, what's up? This is Reed, and today I wanted to go over something I've been really wanting to look into. What's the deal with all of these hubs? Home Assistant, Hubitat, SmartThings, HomeKit, OpenHab, Wink, and everything in between. You might be looking to get your first smart home hub, or maybe you're sick of your current hub and you want to see what else is out there. I'm going to be talking about all the hubs. Yeah, that's right, but don't worry. I'm going to break it down so it's easy to understand and talk about the pros and cons of each. I'm also going to be talking about what's not a hub as well. Believe it or not, I'm actually not perfect, so if I say something wrong about a hub that you're using, let me know down in the comments. I'll also be sharing my opinion on these hubs at the end of the video. Hubs come in all different forms, but they're typically trying to accomplish the same thing, automating your sensors and devices to work together. And I'm gonna be comparing these hubs on how well they do this. There are a few criteria that I'll be using to compare each of these hubs. How easy it is to use, how fast can it control devices, how good is the hub's app notifications and can it be controlled away from your house, Lastly, how compatible is the hub with other devices? Starting things off with Samsung SmartThings, a cloud-based hub that you're probably familiar with or you might have heard about. It's very easy to do complex automations or basic automations. It works with Z-Wave and Zigbee, and they have their own Zigbee sensors that have been updated recently and are now pretty reasonably priced. SmartThings is not perfect by any means though. They still have two apps that you can use to control the hub, each with different functionality, so it keeps things very confusing. The app also doesn't load that quickly, so when you're controlling a device by the cloud, it takes a while to load up the app and turn on that device. Look at the delay it takes for turning on a LifeX light connected to SmartThings using the cloud versus the same LifeX light connected to Home Assistant. Pretty big difference. More on that in a bit. SmartThings does connect to a lot of devices locally, like Hue lights, and it's just as fast as controlling those devices as a hub that only runs locally. The hub is cloud-based, so you can control devices and get notifications even when you're away from your house. So if your water leak sensor is going off, or if someone comes in your front door and unlocks your Z-Wave lock, you can get notified even if you're on vacation. SmartThings is compatible with a decent amount of devices natively, and if you want to get more devices connected to it, you can use custom device handlers. It's also compatible with Alexa and Google Assistant. I'll touch on Wink real quick because they're similar, and I also did a comparison between the two in a video a while back when I didn't really know how to make videos. Wink can do basic automations that they call robots, but nothing too complex. It's much more user-friendly than SmartThings, and there's a range of devices that you can add natively, but you can't add devices that aren't natively supported like you can with SmartThings. It's also cloud-based, so you get all the pros and cons that come with a cloud-based hub that I mentioned earlier for SmartThings. Basically, if the SmartThings or Wink cloud go down, you'll lose a ton of functionality. Which brings us to the next set of hubs, ones that don't rely on the cloud to work. These hubs run locally, so they're always connected to your devices. The first local hub is HomeKit, and HomeKit's been growing on me lately because it's fast and it's really easy to use. The HomeKit hub can run on an old iPad that's always at home, a HomePod or an Apple TV third gen or higher. You will need an iPhone or an iPad to use HomeKit, so it's obviously limiting towards Android users. And it doesn't work with Alexa or Google Assistant, so you're going to use Siri. Are you spying on me constantly or all the time? Nope. The app loads really fast and controlling the devices is quick as well. The app looks nice and it's very user friendly to do automations. You know, typical Apple. The one downside is there's not a lot of devices that are compatible with HomeKit. That list is growing and I hope it continues to grow. Next is Hubitat, a hub that came out a few years ago, so fairly recently, and it runs everything locally. It's targeted towards like SmartThings users who are sick of relying on the cloud and it's compatible with a lot of devices, including Z-Wave and Zigbee. It also works with Alexa and Google Assistant. I thought about buying one of these hubs, but there was just a few things that held me back. First, since it doesn't use the cloud, you can't control your devices remotely. It also doesn't have a native mobile app, so notifications are limited. You can only use 10 SMS messages for notifications, or you have to use a third-party service for notifications. I think this hub has potential for the future, so I'm gonna keep my eye on it. 
Lastly, Home Assistant and OpenHab. And I'm gonna be mainly focusing on Home Assistant. OpenHab has been around longer, so it's probably more stable. It just doesn't seem as advanced or supported by the community compared to the Home Assistant, in my opinion. So what is Home Assistant? It's open source software that runs on a computer and it's completely free to use. People typically install it on an inexpensive Raspberry Pi that you can leave powered on all day at your house. And people love Home Assistant because it runs everything locally and it's super fast. It's also the most compatible with devices out of any hub and you have complete control over everything. That all sounds good, but there's some things you need to know before you decide on Home Assistant. First, you need to be someone who likes to tinker with like a Raspberry Pi, or you like Linux, or you're a developer like myself. Getting this thing up and running will take some learning and time to figure it all out. Setting things up is a mix between using terrible UI and modifying YAML code. If you wanna add a simple automation, it isn't that easy. And it costs $5 a month if you wanna add Google Assistant or if you want to connect to Z-Wave or Zigbee, you'll have to purchase a separate USB stick or connect to a hub like Wink that already has those antennas built in. It has a native iOS app, but if you have Android, you'll have to use the browser version. Controlling it remotely will require some extra work. There's some really cool things you can do with Home Assistant, and it's pretty satisfying turning on and off cloud-based devices so quickly. If your internet goes down, you won't lose any functionality, so that's pretty amazing. But it's not for the majority of people. Even if you're a developer like me, you may not want to go the Home Assistant route. I feel like home automation should be easy so it can make your life easier. I spent way too much time in the past adding Linux to random devices or tinkering with things and it can turn into quite a time suck. So what's my favorite hub? I think that SmartThings gets a bad rap because it's a cloud-based hub, but I do think it's the best option for the majority of people. Obviously we can see that no hub is perfect, they all have their pros and cons, and it's really up to you on how you want to set up your smart home. There are devices out there called hubs, but they're different than the hubs that we just talked about, like the Harmony Hub. It connects to your media devices, and I covered this in the past, and it connects to other hubs as well. And there's also Philips Hue Bridge, what some people call the hub. It's different because it connects to your smart lights. And some people think an Echo or a Google Home is a hub. It's not. And Amazon will say that Echo Plus is a hub because it works with Zigbee devices but it doesn't have automation, so it's not really a hub. I'm not gonna go into Thread right now. There's not a whole lot of devices that use it, so maybe in the future, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Which hub do you think is the best? Let me know down in the comments or up in the poll. Hit me up on Twitter at Smart Home Solver. Hopefully I answered your question, Jason, about which hub to go with. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more Smart Home videos, and we'll see you again next time. Next time on Smart Home Solver, actually forget everything I just said in the video. This hub is the winner. What does it do? Eh, don't worry about that. This hub looks awesome.